He irritates more bowels than a plate of Chipotle. <laughs> British journalist and Twitter terror, Milo Yiannopoulos. <laughs> yeah, people at the Marriott. I thought the Marriott banned it. That's why I stopped I going there. Yeah. Milo, don't you agree with me that this is a great opportunity for Donald Trump to hire this daddy. woman? Put him, dad, as you like daddy. to call it, daddy. Daddy, don't be a conservative. Call him daddy. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, don't you think he should do that? Is he missing an opportunity? Um, well, I mean, the guy was born in Canada. He's a softcore American. What right has he got to talk to anybody about softcore anything? I mean, this is it's what the guy is such a hypocrite. It's, it's cruel, it's mean, and worse, it's slut shaming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's slut shaming. Yes, slut -shaming. it is. This woman's trying to turn her life around. I agree completely. You know, there's really no problem with this. Is the American dream, isn't it? You know, it is. Exactly. You do what you can, you hustle, you make it. One day, you have the glittering vision of an appearance for four and a half seconds in a Ted Cruz campaign video. <laughs> <laughs> and, and because you once smoothed Smooched on script. Yes. Please. Give me a break. I mean, yes. Hollywood actresses have done worse things mm. in a blockbuster movies than this girl probably did in her videos. I find it appalling. I'm not kidding. In, the, in, the gir in Girls, which is HBO, the sex scenes are unbelievable. I watched them so many times, they disgust me. <laughs> but you know what you're right? The, it is the American dream to do amateur porn and then turn your life around. Yes. Look at Kim Kardashian. Look at Paris Hilton. They all started with amateur porn. Cat, I want to go. It's on my side. Yeah. Trump is saying this is a direct threat to you and your family. The elites are letting in people who are undercutting your wages, and I'm against it. Which is a more resonant message? The latter. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Milo, I think you have a keen sense of Trump's appeal because you call him daddy. I do. And the thing is, that's I dark. believe that Sanders and Trump. It's not dog. It's What's so dog dark. About yeah. it's I'm, I'm Trump sexual. And I know you are. I know you are. You call him daddy, and this is. I think this is prophetic uh, because I think Sanders is, for the left, the daddy of nurture, and for the right, Trump is the daddy who's stern. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. I mean, look, any political movement that, um, any political personality that attracts from frat boys to veterans to Ann Coulter to, you know, sassy gay British columnists, there's something <laughs> interesting. There's something interesting going on there. Yes, that's true. And it's, and it's something that the majority of conservative media would rather sneer and be sco and scoff about, have front covers of their magazines saying, oh no, we can't possibly endorse this, you know, horrible populist, you know, yeah. um, uh, sleazy character. Well, I'm sorry, but this person has captured the energy and imagination of conservatives under 50, and conservative media has forgotten how to talk to those people. It doesn't even like them on the rare occasion it notices they exist. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I try to write for people who are under 50, unlike most conservative journalists. And, <laughs> and they... And we they, thank you. <laughs> And they love him. They love him. Yeah, and I, you know, Do you know who else uh, conservatives loved? Do you know who else? Adolf Stevens. The same by neighbor. <laughs> he was a really great guy. <laughs> about unity. Was, the, was an incredibly and powerful act. He never mentions you. He doesn't say anything about any of the trendy fashion yeah. nonsense. It's only economics. Yeah, all right, Milo. Uh, where do you fall on Sanders? <laughs> Well, this, this Democratic debate was a debate between, you know, a woman who is too old and confused to use an iPhone and a man whose credit is too bad to get one. <laughs> the, the problem with both of them is that they just have so little grasp, really, on, you know, on any kind of economic reality. And for all of this talk about Sanders having lots of young supporters, yes, he does, but it's a tiny sliver of the population. It doesn't compare to the popular support for Daddy. And actually, what you just... I'm just saying, and what, what you discover is that these voters are actually quite politically promiscuous. Mm -hmm. um, they don't necessarily care too much about policy. People don't vote for Trump or Sanders because of anything specific they say. Right. They vote to thumb the nose up at the establishment, to yeah. stick two fingers up at the, you know, the whole Washington thing. Mm -hmm. So my hope is that Sanders is going to cost Hillary a fortune, <laughs> then drop out, yeah. and then all his supporters will come over to Daddy, and we'll win. <laughs> come over to Daddy. Come to Daddy. That it should have been his motto from day one. All right, Kat. <laughs> Attention, coddled co-eds. This entire segment may be offensive to you, so here's your trigger warning. <laughs> hey. This week at Rutgers University, which I believe is in New Jersey, who knows, a guest on our panel tonight gave a speech. Milo Yiannopoulos was invited there uh, at Rutgers uh, to speak about how the progressive left is destroying education. While on stage, he suggested that any student who requests trigger warnings and safe spaces should be immediately expelled. Let's take a look at how the crowd reacted. <laughs> they have demonstrated that they are incapable of exposing themselves to new ideas. They have demonstrated that they are incapable of uh, engaging.
engaging in the humble pursuit of knowledge. This man represents hatred! You're from <laughs> That is everything that you need to know about the world. Black Lives Matter, Trump, Trump, Trump. Black Lives, I mean, why don't we just, that's it. All right, Milo. I mean, Trump won. So yeah. <laughs> Truth and justice always prevails in the end. Um, the Trump chants did beat out the Black Lives Matter chants, so I was very happy about that. Did you uh, know this was going to happen? Um, everywhere I go uh, becomes a bit of a mini sensation these days, <laughs> and um, I think it's my natural humility. Yes. Um, and uh, but the, you know, I tend to bring the internet to life in my audiences. You know, so yeah. I get the Black Lives Matter, I get the feminists, I get the Trump supporters. You know, yeah. my, my fans are very sort of a wonderful dysfunctional coalition of people. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so yeah, I, I was I was making what I thought was a relatively uncontroversial point, which is that universities should be centres of learning. Yeah. Um, and this was apparently enough to, for, the, for these feminists to say, this man spews hatred and smear themselves with red blood assault somebody afterwards mm -hmm. uh, and then Black Lives Matter started pr uh, stopping people getting home when they're outside which we, nobody has footage of but yeah just absolutely crazy I mean you, American university campuses are nuts so here's the thing uh, Tucker I believe that what Milo is doing is not a speech it's performance art he is actually proving his premise by simply showing up he actually instigates the problem that he's talking about right it doesn't take much these people have a hair trigger smearing red paint okay. on their faces what a we hope it's right. You gotta know, like it. And you heard it because because I. Isn't that like a directed? Isn't that like cultural appropriation for the American Indians? Isn't oh, that red self? Indians. Yeah. And they were doing Black Power as well, Dude. weren't they? With the with the red faces like stuff. this. And what about the people who can't afford paint? They, They're at home. They spontaneously bleed. No, they spontaneously. That's yeah. it. Like that's it. Yes, yeah. stigmata. I want to ask the janitor who had to clean that up. How well, that, that's, that's the story. I, was, that's I mean, really, that's that's the height of entitlement to not clean up your mess. That is so true. They're like rock stars trashing hotel rooms mm -hmm. or our uh, really? legendary actor, Stephen. Uh, I've never, never known an actor. To By the way, uh, never, we put you at the Hyatt uh, for a myself. reason. No, I, I, I've never been there. <laughs> You, 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 you wrote your initials on the wall, and that wasn't blood. Hey, when you were in college, did you ever, I mean, what is happening? You were in college in the 80s, I imagine. You know, I, I was in college at a time when uh, people were, were actually learning something. And, yes. And that's a long time ago. And, and just shows how old I am. <laughs> But, but, but what's happened is that, is that the educators, the people, the professors have, I don't know where they came from. They came from another uh, generation. They were of, students. Of, of, of yeah. Yeah, they, they were, it's, you know what it is? It's like a virus that's just and passed down. It yeah. just perpetuates this, this yeah. and then these, mindset. These kids will have no discernible talents, so they'll have to become those professors. And they're going to be voters soon. Yeah, which yeah. is really scary. Cat, <laughs> Cat, uh, you've been following this stuff a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, is, what, what's your take on this? Surprised, disappointed, well, aroused? You know, everybody, yeah, well. <laughs> Everybody knows that the best way to get people to take you seriously and your point of view seriously is to just smear a bunch of fake blood on your face and start screaming. It's very intellectual. Um, I think that's what Trump should start doing in the debates if he wants to win if Cruz attacks him. Just smear blood on his face, start screaming, and then Cruz will say, can't argue with that, and then boom, he's president. There you go. See, we, works. Just, we learned something hmm? there. Very little, actually. We but we learned something. We learned something. <laughs> okay, we learned nothing. Up next, we're going to talk about Twitter's new safety council that cracks down on so-called harmful speech. And James Woods launched this $10 million defamation suit against an anonymous Twitter user who called him a cocaine addict. Will Twitter be forced to reveal the identity of that user? And is it Joanne? That's that. <laughs> They're wheeling and dealing to prevent hurt feelings. This week, Twitter announced the creation of a trust and safety council to ensure users, quote, feel safe expressing themselves. What? <laughs> the council's comprised of over 40 mostly liberal organizations, including the Anti-Defamation League, GLAD, and something called 
the Dangerous Speech Project, which sounds like the name of my fish tribute band. <laughs> While uh, proponents say the council will help prevent, uh, help Twitter prevent harassment and bullying, critics argue it can be used to squash certain political viewpoints like mine and even censor free speech. And another Twitter free speech news actor and my Pilates partner, James Woods, <laughs> stepped closer to unmasking a Twitter user who called him a cokehead last year. Wood sued him for defamation. The anonymous defendant tried to get the $10 million suit dismissed, but the judge said the case can proceed and everyone celebrated with an eight ball. <laughs> I'm joking, don't sue me. All right, uh, Stephen, what's happening? Everybody knows nobody uses cocaine anymore. That's <laughs> so I, the, the suit has gotta be. <laughs> and you are literally in Scarface. I yes. am in Scarface, and I can tell you that it's been about 35 years. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, you don't even remember Scarface. I, no, and, but the other thing is about Jimmy, and I, I can yeah. call him Jimmy because yeah. I, I know him. He's a very big brain, brainy guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's very courageous, and yeah. he says things that, that people don't like to hear. Yeah. So it makes sense that someone would maybe overhear him and accuse him of doing some drug. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true. Because he's smart. No, it's because he's conservative and everybody and thinks you're on drugs. You exactly. have to be on, if you're conservative, exactly. you're on drugs. In Hollywood, that oh, yeah. is. Uh, Tucker, thoughts on this? On this? I, I, should anonymous, should it be anonymous? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm all for privacy. But what really strikes me is the assault on free speech by the left. This is a huge change. When I was a kid, I'm not that old. Liberals were flaky and they were into macrobiotic food and all yoga and all stuff. But they, in the end, they, they really kind of did support your right to say something yeah. they disagreed with. Now they don't. And that's where the conversation ends. I, you can't even have a conversation with someone who doesn't acknowledge your right to have a divergent view. You, that becomes fascism. That is actually a threat to America for real. Mm -hmm. Like all the other crap aside, that, that is the core of it. They threaten America. No, you're, you're right, though. The, the, the worst thing a, a leftist was guilty of was like buying a, a natural deodorant that didn't work. Right, and it never did work. Yeah, it never did okay. work. It never did work, but we loved him for it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Milo, what do you make of this safety council? I think it's directed at you. <laughs> no, it, it's literally all about me. Yes, it is. <laughs> it, it is. I'm why That's it happened. Yes. And, you know, and you know how I know this? Yes. Is there's this crazy woman called Anita Sarkeesian from Feminist Frequency, this far-left, wacky video games critic who would never have been on there if it hadn't been for me, and me getting Unverified because I got the wrong opinions on Twitter. They took my check mark away. Can you believe that? No. It's like it's like it's like it's like buying a business class ticket and then you get on the plane and they tell you to turn right. <laughs> I felt disgusting for weeks. What was it like back there in the unverified section? <laughs> it's awful. It's the food is terrible. <laughs> it's like a cattle car. <laughs> no, I mean uh, you're absolutely right. It is it is uh, Orwellian and it's terrifying. They've started to give uh, you know ideological slaps on the wrist these networks and then then you've got Facebook teaming up with uh, Merkel in Germany to censor yeah. discussion about immigration. Perfectly re reasonable, respectable, mainstream opinions about the million and a half Muslims that are coming into Germany. And Facebook says, you know, Angela, you just tell us and within 24 hours we'll take it off the network. Yeah. This is scary stuff. But yeah. we do have to remember, though, that Twitter is a business. Okay, so their stock is down. Yeah. They've lost 2 million users recently. Thank God. And so what, what do you do when you're a business that's like, oh, we need to make more money? You look at the complaints, which are often, in this case, bullying and harassment, mm -hmm. and then you try to appease those people who are complaining and try to get more people to come in. So Twitter is not some, you know, model of morality. They are a business who's trying to make money, and this is their solution to their problem. Yeah. My problem with Twitter is I'm only on it when I'm drunk. <laughs> and then the next day I wake up and I go, what in God's name have I done? <laughs> and then I get to work and there's an email from somebody saying, we need to talk to you about something. <laughs> uh, Kat, my, my guess is that you get harassed all the time on Twitter, but I also guess that you probably deserve it. <laughs> I do get harassed all the time, but it doesn't bother me emotionally like people complain about because like, you know, some people, they say, you know, love comes from within. My self-hatred comes from within. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with those people. And if the people can't handle being on Twitter, don't be on Twitter. You know, go play an acoustic guitar at a coffee shop in Brook or uh, Brooklyn or Portland and like cry into your tea or whatever. But just get off of it because you know what? It's not that big of a deal that I'm called a horrible, horrible slut every day to me. It's fine. It's like, all right, whatever your profile avatars of a dog. You know? <laughs> uh, don't 
won't go anywhere. Saying, and what, what you discover is that these voters are actually quite politically promiscuous. Mm -hmm. um, they don't necessarily care too much about policy. People don't vote for Trump or Sanders because of anything specific they say. Right. They vote to thumb the nose up at the establishment, to yeah. stick two fingers up at the you know the whole Washington thing. Mm -hmm. So my hope is that Sanders is going to cost Hillary a fortune, <laughs> then drop out, yeah. and then all his supporters will come over to Daddy, and we'll win. <laughs> come over to Daddy. Come to Daddy. That it should have been his motto from day one. All right, Kat. Attention, coddled co-eds. This entire segment may be offensive to you, so here's your trigger warning. <laughs> this week at Rutgers University, which I believe is in New Jersey, who knows, a guest on our panel tonight gave a speech. I try to write for people who are under 50, unlike most conservative journalists. And, and they... And we they, thank you. <laughs> And they love him. They love him. Yeah. And I, you know, Do you know who else uh, conservatives loved? Do you know who else? Adolf Stevens, specifically by neighbor. <laughs> he was a really great guy. About unity was, the, was an incredibly and powerful he never act. Mentions you. you go to Bernie Rock, he doesn't say anything about any of the trendy fashion yeah. nonsense. It's only economics. Yeah, all right, Milo. Uh, where do you fall on Sanders? <laughs> Well, this, this Democratic debate was a debate between, you know, a woman who is too old and confused to use an iPhone and a man whose credit is too bad to get one. <laughs> the, the problem with both of them is that they just have so little grasp, really, on, you know, on any kind of economic reality. And for all of this talk about Sanders having lots of young supporters, yes, he does, but it's a tiny sliver of the population. It doesn't compare to the popular support for Daddy. And actually, what you just... I'm just... For a four and a half seconds in a Ted Cruz campaign video. <laughs> and, and because you once smooched on script... Yeah. Yes. Give me a break. I mean, yeah. Hollywood actresses have done worse things mm. in a blockbuster movies than this girl probably did in her videos. I find it appalling. I'm not kidding. Are you, in, the, in, the, in Girls, which is HBO, the sex scenes are unbelievable. I watched them so many times, they disgust me. <laughs> but you know what you're right? The, it is the American dream to do amateur porn and then turn your life around. Yes. Look at Kim Kardashian. Look at Paris Hilton. They all started with amateur porn. Cat, I, I want to go. Is on my side. Yeah. Trump is saying this is a direct threat to you and your family. The elites are letting in people who are undercutting your wages, and I'm against it. Which is a more resonant message? The latter. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Milo, I think you have a keen sense of Trump's appeal because you call him daddy. I do. And the thing is, that's I dark. believe that Sanders and Trump. It's not dark. He irritates more bowels than a plate of Chipotle. <laughs> British journalist and Twitter terror, Milo Yiannopoulos. <laughs> yeah, people at the Marriott. I thought the Marriott banned it. That's why I stopped I going know. there. Yeah. Milo, don't you agree with me that this is a great opportunity for Donald Trump to hire this daddy. woman? Put him, dad, as you like daddy. to call it, daddy. Daddy, don't be a conservative. Call him daddy. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, don't you think he should do that? Is he missing an opportunity? Um, well... I mean, the guy was born in Canada. He's a softcore American. What right has he got to talk to anybody about softcore anything? I mean, this is it's what the guy is such a hypocrite. It's, it's cruel, it's mean, and worse, it's slut shaming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's slut shaming. Yes, slut -shaming. it is. This woman's trying to turn her life around. I agree completely. You know, there's really no problem with this. Is the American dream, isn't it? You know, it is. You exactly. do what you can, you hustle, you make it. One day, you have the glittering vision of an appearance. Oh, God, it's so dark. About it. I'm, I'm Trump sexual. Yeah. I know you are. I know. You are. You call him daddy, and this is, I think this is prophetic uh, because I think Sanders is, for the left, the daddy of nurture, and for the right, Trump is the daddy who's stern. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. I mean, look, any political movement that, um, any political personality that attracts from frat boys to veterans to Ann Coulter to, you know, sassy gay British columnists, there's something <laughs> interesting. There's something interesting going on there. Yes, that's true. And it's, and it's something that the majority of conservative media would rather sneer and be sco and scoff about, have front covers of their magazines saying, oh no, we can't possibly endorse this, you know, horrible populist, you know, yeah. um, uh, sleazy character. Well, I'm sorry, but this person has captured the energy and imagination of conservatives under 50, and conservative media has forgotten how to talk to those people. It doesn't even like them on the rare occasion it notices they exist. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I try